the biggest risk of AI is that it's so damn good and so damn useful. No human being can code in C and in Python and write poetry and speak in Chinese and English and German and 150 other languages, and no human can learn all of this in just a few weeks. In de serie Tegenlicht Toekomstverkenners gaan we met inspirerende denkers op zoek naar sporen van de toekomst. Dit is de toekomst van AI volgens Michal Kosinski, Hi, good morning. psycholoog aan Stanford University. Ooit gebruikte hij AI om de menselijke psychologie te voorspellen. Maar nu richt hij zijn onderzoek niet meer op mensen, maar op de AI zelf. As a psychologist, I just became really interested in how ChatGPT thinks. Hij vindt dat de nieuwste generatie AI zelf toe is aan psychologisch onderzoek. I was wondering why are these new large language models interesting to you as a psychologist? Well, I started with using those models to try to understand humans better. I would, I would be modeling human behavior or trying to use those models to predict people's scores on personality and other questionnaires, trying to diagnose certain psychological conditions. And as I was using those models more in my work as a psychologist, at some point I realized that, hey, you know, those models are really interesting themselves. As they were getting more complex and uh, larger and more advanced, um, they developed many emergent properties that neither I nor the engineers who were designing and training those models expected that those models would uh, develop. And many of those characteristics, many of those properties, properties were very human-like. What you also touched on in your research is theory of mind. What is theory of mind, actually, and, and why do you think ChatGPT4 has it? Okay, so one of the mental properties, mental characteristics, functions that humans have is so-called theory of mind. Now, theory of mind is ability. We also call it, call it mentalizing or mind reading. Theory of mind is an ability that allows people to take perspective of others. So, for example, see that uh, if someone is not in the room with us here now having this uh, conversation and they just suddenly walk in, they would not know what we're talking about. If you uh, just told me a secret now, a person that is not with us here is unlikely to know it. And we, adult humans, can see it so intuitively and so automatically that most of the people would not even realize that it's actually a pretty advanced skill, being able to not only think for yourself, but also think for other people, model how other people are thinking. Children below the age of five do not really get those mechanisms as well. They start really seeing the world through other people's eyes only at seven, nine, 11, and so on. Now, early language models couldn't really distinguish between minds of, let's say, two characters in a story. And now, just last year, in the last months of last year, so very recently, suddenly those models started clicking. And when you look at those most recent models, such as ChatGPT4, they are acing those tasks. They can essentially they can take perspective of other people at the same level as adult, healthy humans can. Now, also, let's not forget that when we interact with those models, people sometimes say, oh, but this model is an idiot. It like, doesn't really know what happened yesterday or two days ago. Uh, I chat with it every day, and it each time forgets what we talked about last time. And this is true. Those models are currently deployed in such a way as to prevent them from remembering what you talked about with them yesterday. They're essentially, you know, like a, uh, like a main character in Memento. They just lack short-term memory. Each time they go to sleep, they wake up afresh, forgetting everything um, they did on the previous day. But this is not because they can't do it. We just deliberately deprive them of this opportunity. Now, if we turn it on, if we turn this functionality on, if we let those models learn as they go, if we let those models browse the internet, if we let those models learn essentially from experience in a dynamic fashion, they will become even more powerful, even more human-like.
What would you say to people who say that you're like humanizing these systems too much? It's obvious and undeniable that they can go beyond the training data. They're creative. They say or paint or draw things that no human has ever drawn and painted before. And by the way, that has been the case for a very long time. It's just that when it comes to language or images, those models were, you know, just a few years ago, just a year ago, those models were just idiots. But when you look at other AI models, like chess playing models, those models not only became better than humans quite some time ago, but also became more creative than humans quite some time ago. So in the chess world, the GPT moment was essentially alpha zero, where this model that trained, taught itself to play chess in four hours or five hours without ever talking with a human about how to do it, then went out and not only beaten all of the humans, but also all of the other computer models that we have been developing for decades. And when you listen to chess masters that were observing this computer program, this new computer program playing chess, they would use words such as uh, superhuman alien species, extremely creative chess play. And when you have a human chess competition these days, the judges, judges that try to spot people who cheat by using a computer, uh, you know, some are having a little uh, earphone or having a computer in their pocket, they essentially look for moves that are too creative and too unexpected. I want to repeat this. You try to detect a non-human artificial player by looking for moves that are too creative and too unexpected, and then you essentially go and, you know, search the person. So chess players knew it for quite some time that those models are way more creative than humans. So uh, I think for, for the rest of the humanity, apart from the chess players, you know, the moments where we kind of realized how tremendous the progress in AI has been in recent years is now. So if this is possible, then of course the question is, hey, what other abilities, what other uniquely human skills those models are going to get next? Humans also can uh, make moral judgments. They have a feeling, you know, about what's just and what's not just. Humans have religious experiences and spiritual experiences. Humans have consciousness. Those are just advanced mental functions that we humans have. And those models that we thought would be just predicting the next word in a sentence, if they can have fear of mind, what's next? Moral judgments? Uh, consciousness? It just strongly suggests that those other properties will emerge next. Let me give you a particular high-stakes example. Justice system. We say, well, people are talking about replacing judges, human judges, with AI, and maybe using AI to make judgments or making decisions in the context of the system. And people say, well, all great, but you know what? AI is racist and sexist and ageist. We cannot have that. We only can implement it when it's perfect. Now, the problem with this thinking is that it will never be perfect. We shouldn't compare it, judge it against perfection. We should judge it against the best available alternative. And the best available alternative to biased AI is an even more biased human. You know who is? the original racist, sexist, and ageist black box of a decision maker, human judge. We can already demonstrate today that if we replaced human judges with AI, we would have fewer people in prisons, fewer mistakes, less bias in the prison uh, population. We essentially would be living in a more just and fair world. Are we understandably reluctant to do it? Yeah, of course, because this is a high stakes environment. We have to be really cautious. Are we paying a price for every day when we postpone uh, the implementation of this new technology? Of course we do. We pay the price with people being in prison that maybe should not be there. People who could be let out of prison because they're already no longer a threat to society that we keep there because we lack resources and we uh, lack enough judges to make and review 
uh, those decisions. So we pay the price in people who are unfairly sentenced or stay in prison way beyond um, uh, when it's needed. The biggest risk of AI is that it's so damn good and so damn useful, and it's going to remove so many of the problems. It is already removing so many of the problems that we have. It's going to spare us so much sacrifice and uh, so much suffering that we have at the moment. And this is why it's so dangerous, because sooner or later, most of us are going to be using it to sort out great fraction of our problems and help us to interact with others, help us to gather information, entertain us, inform us, give us advice, give us you know, psychological counseling. As we rely on it more and more, and we rely on it because it's just so damn good, we're becoming much more dependent on it. And it's still in its infancy. We are very far away from the ceiling of where this technology can get. Those models are doubling in capacity, mental capacity, you know, every few months. And the sky is the limit. It will become so above our level that we'll have trouble actually comprehending how good it is. Imagine being a farm animal. A farm animal doesn't even appreciate the poem that the farmer just recited or a song that the farmer was listening to while tending to those, those farm animals. From farm animal perspective, a farmer is probably pretty stupid. It doesn't eat, you know, it doesn't eat uh, grain and uh, it doesn't moo, it doesn't, you know, do anything useful from a perspective of an animal. And yet, of course, we understand that the mental capacity of the farmer is just so much greater than any, the, the mental capacity of the animals that it's the farmer is tending to. But we also know that those animals have no way of tricking the farmer, of managing the farmer, of taking over the farm. They just can't really do it. And they depend on the farmer for the food and security and heat and protection. <coughs> Meaning that even if they wanted to, if they managed to take over the farm, this would end very badly for them. And I think that this is, this metaphor, is uh, very soon going to apply to us humans. Quite an Orwellian uh, metaphor. <laughs> it's directly Orwellian. <laughs>